Murder in the First is a highly stylized portrayal of fictitious events using some historically real people involved in the story. For the sake of dramatic license, many of Murder in the First's depictions of Alcatraz and its staff are completely inaccurate. Murder in the First portrays the warden as managing three prisons simultaneously, USP Alcatraz, and the California State Prisons at Folsom and San Quentin. The movie further states that the warden visited Alcatraz only 24 times over a three-year period. In fact, no one has ever been warden of a federal prison and a state prison simultaneously. James A. Johnston, the actual warden at Alcatraz and one of the most respected prison administrators of his generation, was warden at Folsom in 1912, and San Quentin from 1913 to 1924. He did not become warden at Alcatraz until 1934 and served in that position full-time. He lived right on the island, in a house just a few yards from the front door of the cell house. Nor is there any validity to claims that FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover selected Johnston to be warden at Alcatraz, that Hoover and the Alcatraz management intimidated prospective witnesses in Young's trial, that inmates were being driven insane at Alcatraz, or that 32 were removed from the island in straitjackets during a period of only a few years leading up to Young's trial. Equally groundless and unfair is the depiction of officers at Alcatraz as sadistic brutes. The evil prison officer is one of the oldest and least imaginative movie cliches, and one of the most misleading. Various events in the movie, such as a scene where the fictitious associate warden Milton Glenn slashes Young's Achilles tendon to prevent future escapes, are fabrications. Murder in the First also claims that Young was a teenage orphan who was sentenced to Alcatraz for stealing $5 from a grocery store in order to feed his starving sister, and that he never harmed or attempted to harm anyone before entering Alcatraz. The true story is that he was a bank robber who had taken and brutalized a hostage on at least one occasion, and committed murder in 1933, some three years before being incarcerated at Alcatraz. He had served time in state prisons in Montana and Washington before entering federal prison for the first time in 1935 at the U.S. Penitentiary on McNeil Island, Washington, which is now a state prison. Although Young did participate in a January 1939 escape attempt along with fellow prisoners, Rufus McCain, Arthur Doc Barker, the son of infamous gun-toting criminal Ma Barker, Dale Stamp Hill, possibly the inspiration for the name James Stamp Hill, the fictitious attorney in the film, and final co-conspirator William Martin, Henry Young was not kept naked in a dark dungeon for three years as punishment as the movie indicates. During one hearing, in his own words, Henry Young described his time in segregation as Its size was approximately that of a regular cell 9 feet by 5 feet by about 7 feet high. I could just touch the ceiling by stretching out my arm. You are stripped nude and pushed into the cell. Guards take your clothes and go over them minutely for what few grains of tobacco may have fallen into the cuffs or pockets. There is no soap. No tobacco. No toothbrush, the smell, well you can describe it only by the word stink. It is like stepping into a sewer. It is nauseating. After they have searched your clothing, they throw it at you. For bedding, you get two blankets, around five in the evening. You have no shoes, no bed, no mattress, nothing but the four damp walls and two blankets. The walls are painted black. Once a day I got three slices of bread, no, that is an error. Some days I got four slices. I got one meal in five days, and nothing but bread in between. In the entire thirteen days I was there, I got two meals. I have seen but one man get a bath in solitary confinement, in all the time that I have been there. That man had a bucket of cold water thrown over him. Instead, Henry was held in the disciplinary segregation unit in the main cell house as punishment for the escape attempt. 
prison records indicate that he was confined to a normal cell, not a dungeon, with plumbing, an electric light, a cot, and other appropriate cell furnishings. The events surrounding Young's fatal attack on Rufus McCain are also portrayed inaccurately. In the movie, Young becomes a madman after three years in the dungeon, is then taken directly from the dungeon to the dining hall, and, moments later, stabs McCain to death with a spoon handle. The implication is that Young's homicidal behavior was a direct result of his inhumane confinement and that he had no control over his actions. Although the choice of the weapon used is documented. In reality, Young was released from his cell in segregation after only a few months. He was returned to the general population no later than autumn 1939. More than a year after that, in December 1940, he killed McCain in the Industries Building. The movie also implies that Young died on Alcatraz in 1942, evidently committing suicide after scrawling the word victory on the wall or floor of his cell. This is not true either. Young remained at Alcatraz until 1948, when he was transferred to the Medical Center for Federal Prisoners at Springfield, Missouri. When his federal sentence expired in 1954, he was turned over to the Washington State Penitentiary at Walla Walla to begin a life sentence for an earlier murder conviction. In 1972, he was released from Washington State Penitentiary, but he jumped parole and, according to Washington State authorities, his whereabouts are unknown. Therefore, far from dying as a result of a suicide in 1942, Henry Young may well still be alive today.